that a lot of women tell me like that's on their bucket list to have at least one one night stand. Mm, I want to f- on a Ferris wheel, but that's on my bucket list. But with somebody that I'm fucking with. So someone that you're locked in with. Why Ferris wheel? I don't know. I like I like thrill. Mm. Like I like thrill stuff. So like movie that's theaters. Like, yeah. Somebody's bar mitzvah. Like <laughs> that shit's cool. I fuck with that. Shalom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What it do, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day, with an I, not a Y, do not X, Y. And ladies and gentlemen, I have a great one for y'all because we are joined by somebody who is a aspiring podcaster herself. Well, no, let me not even say that because that sounds like potentially. No, this is someone who is starting her podcast within the next month or so, her mm-hmm. own podcast. Um, that she'll be a part of. So I figured, what better way to introduce her to the podcast world than to throwing her in the wolf den? Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a good friend and a great vibe, the one and only Destiny. Hey, you guys. And Destiny, even though that is your name, first off, is, does your name have like any type of like meaning behind it? Um, I don't think so. Let my stepmother tell it. So all my parents, they all did 20 years in the military, right? Mm. My stepmother thinks that it was destiny that Mm. my dad made it back from Iraq in time to see me born. Mm. And then I talked to him about it. He said he was back a whole month before I even popped out. But still, that month goes by quick. A month goes by quick. It do, but my name was already set in stone. Well, it could have still been have destined, even though it was premeditated. I believe so. Okay. Okay. So I think you should run with that. Gotcha. So like I said, you are soon to be having your own podcast. First and foremost, what is it going to be called? It's just a podcast. Okay, you haven't come up with a name first? If you came up with a name yet? That is the name. What is it? It's just a podcast. It's just a podcast? Mm-hmm. Okay. What will be the topics or niche, if you would? So it sounds cliche, but quite frankly, everything. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I had to narrow it down... Um, me and my friend will be speaking to like the younger adults or whatever, everybody kind of like maneuvering through our 20s and, you know, early 30s, um, because you'd be surprised with how much a lot of people have in common. Like you'd be telling a story just like kind of how we, you know, had that conversation a little earlier about the whole um what was it like not getting our hopes up, you mm-hmm. know, too high or whatever. Right, and I right. just completely resonated with you. So right. I was like, see, yeah, like a lot of us are going through a lot of stuff. So I feel like um, one of them episodes, if I could like help somebody, mm-hmm. like just like give advice or just to know that like they're not alone in whatever it is that they're going through. Mm-hmm. That's my main focus. Like that's my goal. Okay. And, that's a good yeah. one. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's not bad to have like a everything type of podcast because yeah. a lot of people have that. I still haven't found my niche. Really? I still haven't. Like, Mm -hmm. for the past, like, two years, I've been trying to narrow down on the niche, but I just haven't been able to. Who says you have to, though? Well, the reason I want to is because I want to dig deep and not wide. Mm -hmm. I think I can, if I find a niche and find a community only based upon that niche, niche, I feel I'd have better chance at monetizing yeah. and just building loyalty. Yeah. Um, but nonetheless, I do have loyal I do have a loyal fan base. Mm-hmm. Um it's not big, but I do have a loyal fan base of yeah. those that do tune in regularly. Yeah. But I feel like if it's a re- if it's a specific topic every week that someone could look forward to, mm-hmm. then it will create more attention. That's yeah. just my thought behind it, plus the, the monetization part. Mm-hmm. But until I get there, I just kinda keep it broad. Yeah. You know, so that's not a bad idea. Um, how old are you? I am 25. 25? Uh, what year were you born? 98. Are you a millennial? I don't know. There's a controversial debate about that. Like I think some you just people, missed it. Yeah, some people think I'm Gen, uh, what is it, Z? Gen Z. 98 is Gen Z. I have one. I listen to Al Green. I was going to say, you. out loud. I'm, I'm there. You give millennial vibes, mm-hmm. but unfortunately, you are Gen Z. But it's cool though, because like Whatever. I said, you give millennial vibes, so <laughs> we'll we'll give you a pass on that. Okay, I you can slide. It. You can slide. Thanks. All right, so we're gonna start here. I was on Twitter, which is very toxic, which is why I deleted it. But recently, I re-downloaded it. Hmm. Still mad at myself about that, but it is what it is. I was on Twitter and I found something that said top five red flag jobs for a woman to have. Mm-hmm. All right. I know this is coming. So pretty much that's what we're going to do. So 
This is the top five red flag jobs for a woman to have. You ready? I'm ready. Yes. <clears throat> Number one, nurse. I think that's without a doubt, inevitably. Yeah, yeah that's 100% accurate, mm -hmm. especially them CNs. All right. <clears throat> Number two, bottle girl. Yeah. It goes without saying. Mm -hmm. Number three, beautician. Beg to differ on that one. We'll get to that. Mm -hmm. Number four, real estate agent. <laughs> that was my dream job at one point, but I can see how that, uh, yeah. <laughs> the, the pipeline is they usually go from either beautician or esthetician to real estate agent. That's, yeah. that's like the job pipeline. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, that was number four. Number five, drum roll, please. Oh, that's a hell of a drum. Sorry. Bartender. Oh, shock. <laughs> I can't wait till we get into this. What are your thoughts on that list? Bullshit. Oh, you know what? I'm not going to say bullshit. I'm going to say bullshit, but I'm not going to say bullshit. It, it, it depends. Is it majority accurate or minority? Is it? It's a minority. It's on the, it's on the minor. Okay. So it's not as accurate is what you're saying. No. First of all, mm -hmm. all of that is circumstantial. Every last one of them. Everything is life is circumstantial. Life subjective, is subjective. If that's what if that's what we're gonna go with it. But if we're talking about a broad spectrum yeah. of yeah. the job itself, yeah. yeah, no, that's bullshit. Um, but then it also depends on where they're bartending at. Are they bartending in nightlife? Are they bartending at a country club? Are they bartending at a family restaurant? So you're talking so wait, are you saying the bartender part is bullshit or the whole list? The whole list is, uh, except that, no, I, mm, I, I was talking about the bartending part. Okay, okay, okay. I thought you were talking about the list. Yeah. The list, yeah, your name. I think the list is pretty accurate. We can. Well, I know the list isn't accurate. We're not going to, well, the bartender part we're going to get into, mm -hmm. but everything else. about the other list. Yeah, it's, it's not accurate. It's not accurate? It's you don't think accurate. that's accurate? No. Okay, then what would you like replace with? What would you replace with what? Damn, I can't say it. Shit, a, a prostitute. That's, that's, that, that's, that goes that's without known. being said. Exactly. But Prostitute. who's to say every bottle girl is fucking their client? Who's to say every RN, every time she changes an IV, mm -hmm. she's hitting a split on the dick? That's not it's not a it's not a guarantee. Prostitution is the only job on this earth that we can say for sure. That is that's she's throwing the pussy. Okay, of course. That's why prostitutes not on here. If it mm -hmm. was that simple, prostitute, it's not that you're making it. Nah, that's too easy. I'm going too deep into it. So yeah. why RNs? Why are nurses? Nurses? Why? Because nurses are very uh, what's the word? Uh, promiscuous. Is that the word? They're promiscuous. Yes. On a large scale. Yeah. Now, you're saying not every, of course, not every single nurse is right. known for stepping out and creeping mm -hmm. or just being promiscuous. But vast majority of stories, nurses I know, men I know that have dealt with nurses, mm -hmm. literally turn away when they hear they're a nurse. Damn. It's majority. I'm not saying it's every single one, but nurses have nurses have a high a high reputation. Let's do that. Let's go off of reputations. Okay. Her, nurses have a very high reputation mm -hmm. for being wild. After they cut, okay, I can see that. Drewski actually just made a, a a skit about that. About what a nurse? Yeah, like they was she was partying, she was doing too much, whatever. Had to kick back, and then like it flipped to like a couple stories later, and she was like late to her nursing job. So, do you think he made that skit because it's not like known? Well, first, they, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. that's like saying a a a, a stare. That's like. Like saying a stereotype mm -hmm. and saying, oh, I just made that up. No, mm -hmm. stereotypes are spoken about because it's common. Derived from somewhere. Yeah. But yeah. can I tell you, I would take a nurse over a party promoter or a DJ any day. You're talking man or woman? Both. I don't know too many women promoters. I know very few and DJs. I know very few of both. In Charlotte. Um, yeah. we, we'll get into it. Yeah, I can't speak on that. I can't speak on that. Because I'm from Miami, so yeah, everybody's everything there. Anyway, let's let's get into the nitty gritty of today. Okay, so you said you didn't agree with the bartender part because you are in fact yourself a bartender, correct? Correct, I am. Yes. All right. Because when you say bartender, like I'm, I'm assuming they're talking about like the bartenders, like in the club. Anywhere, clubs, bars. Now I don't know who made this list, but if I had to guess, I think the reason why they said bartenders is because. 
they're very flirtatious. You have to be. Mm, and we're going to talk about it. Before we do, let me ask you, tell me one thing you love, one thing you hate about being a bartender. I love fast money. Um, so I've been serving since I was like 16. I love getting paid every day. Legally? Serving. Le serving. Okay. Yeah, serving okay. since hit the serving since sixteen. Okay. Bartending since twenty one. Okay. Yeah. Um I love yeah, I love the fast money. A con, um people think that bartending is just like, oh, drinks, mm -hmm. drunk, shots, this and the third. Mm -hmm. We're responsible for your lives. They think it's a party. Yeah. So yeah. like it's been times where I've been put in uncomfortable situations where I've had to cut somebody off for their own livelihood or somebody else's. Um, just the whole being responsible for grown people thing is not really my speed. Mm, um, I feel that. But uh, yeah, I'd say that's a con. Okay. Let's put your skills to the test. Sure. I walk into the bar. Your first time seeing me, me and me, we mm -hmm. speak for maybe 30 seconds tops. Mm -hmm. What type of drink do you think I would order? Just by looking at you or because I don't know the conversation that we had. Yeah, it depends on the conversation that we had. Looking at me. Just looking at you. Mm -hmm. um, you look mm -hmm. like a brown person. So um, far, so good? Yeah. So I'd um, either show you some of the brown drinks that we have on the cocktail list or I don't know if you do like Henny and Coke I or... <laughs> You know, some people are that simple. Let me, let me, let me go, go okay. No, give me a specific cocktail. Manhattan, old fashioned. Good job. Yes, old fashioned. Oh, I hit it on the head. You did. You did hit it on the head. Henny and Coke. I've I've progressed from Henny and Coke. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving Henny alone. I haven't drank Henny in months. I don't. I think I'm good completely off of Henny. Good. Just because I love Henny, mm -hmm. you know, that's always going to have a special place in my heart. For those that know, know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I'm just I'm just moving past Henny, you know, okay. moving more you towards gotta elevate sometimes. yeah, bur bourbon and whiskey. Yeah. Um, but yeah, okay. So old fashioned. What's a Manhattan? An old white man's drink. Is that like whiskey? Mm -hmm. It's whiskey. Um, I haven't made. Can I? I probably made one Manhattan my whole time bartending. Is that like uh uh what's that what's that whiskey called? The real old whiskey that white people like. Uh, Jimmy Walker is that Jimmy Walker? Jimmy Walker is like a it's like a Scotch. Okay. Um, yeah. But they do they do love that. Yeah. yeah. I mean I can I can make it with I can make anything really, but I don't want to toot my own horn. Um, but old fashions I I do pretty good with those. Yeah. Um, I always one thing about me I always ask the customer like you like it sweet you like it like not sweet because mm -hmm. a lot of people. They'll just make the drink or whatever, however they see fit. Mm -hmm. But to me, if you're going to be paying for the drink and mm -hmm. I'm expecting you to tip me, mm -hmm. I might as well just ask you how you want it. Like some people don't like bitters in it or some people don't want the cherry or the orange or the, even though that's what goes into an old fashioned, mm -hmm. people are going to be people. What would lead you, like what would uh, make you want to pour a little bit more lick than the usual for a customer? Like if you're cute. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. Like I'd probably give you a double. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the reason being behind it? Because you have a nice face. And if we're already, we've already been talking and mm -hmm. vibing or whatever for that 30 seconds when you first came in, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, like, it's going to progress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by progress? Like our conversation is going to extend past that 30 seconds. So are you doing it for the uh, attraction and the engagement and the conversation, which ultimately leads to the tip, or are you doing it for something beyond the surface? It's fun for me, honestly. Uh, what is? Like the whole interaction between yeah. like a guy and, you know, or even girls. There, I've, I've had um, my fair share of um, offers from ladies too. So, you know. Bleachy. Yeah. <laughs> Bing bong. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's interesting. Okay, so it's not even for just the tip. No pun, I, no pun intended. You dirty fuckers. Pun intended. No pun. <laughs> you said pun intended. <laughs> no, I Sorry. I do it. I do it for the fun. Cause me, I don't really go. It sounds crazy. I don't really go into situations expecting tips. People already know whether they're gonna tip before they even park their car and go into wherever it is they're going into. You're if you not necessarily. It depends some, on the, it, it depends on the service. 
And it depends on the attractiveness. How you said, mm -hmm. since I'm since uh, I'm attracted in your eyes, you mm -hmm. would give me a double shot. You being attracted in my eyes, I will leave an extra tip. Mm -hmm. Like the law of attraction, like the attractiveness of a person yeah, it's real. that leads to like more benefits in life is 100% mm -hmm. real. Like I right. literally studied this 100% mm -hmm. real. There's also people who are, there's people that are ignorant. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they, they just don't know to tip, even mm -hmm. though it's 2024. Mm -hmm. um, I think that you should give a tip to whoever is providing you a service, whether that service lasted 30 seconds or 30 minutes. So you're, so are you advocating for, to go orders, people at the register receiving tips. Um, if you had to walk up and get your own to go order to go order inside of the restaurant, mm -hmm. it's it's up to you. But if somebody took the time to like bag your order, make sure you had everything in there, and then walked it out to your car because you decided to park in the in the come bring me my fucking food the curbside spot, yeah, I'm leave like a dollar or two. Okay, that's what's, that's what's four quarters. That's reasonable. Yeah. I've never done curbside you anything. Haven't? My mom yeah. loves it. I I don't do curbside. If I go mm -hmm. to cookout, I'm going to the window. I just I don't know. Yeah. I just try to do the opposite of what the majority of people do. But okay, so that makes sense. But you're saying if you're going into a spot, they already yeah. have to go order ready for you. Right. You just grab it and go. Like I, you don't you don't have to. Some people do. Yeah. But I think, I'm not I think, gonna look at you weird. I think that's outrageous. Yeah. I'm not even gonna look at you weird for the curbside thing because you you didn't you didn't get service somebody brought your food out to you right. so it's like a courtesy like right. thanks for bringing me my food here's right. four quarters but right. if you sat down mm -hmm. in somebody's section mm -hmm. you ordered food mm -hmm. they came brought you your food and you asked for ketchup they left one to get the ketchup then you asked for napkins and you're running them mm -hmm. tip that person that makes sense realistically if you're a business owner right and mm -hmm. you're providing a service mm -hmm. You, I use like a, a, a three rule. Mm -hmm. um, like if I'm selling something, I need to sell it for the cost that I got it for, mm -hmm. the cost to reorder it again, and then a profit. Run that back one more time, please. So let's say I have a business, I'm selling water bottles, right? Mm -hmm. This water bottle, and let's say I, I got like everything going on, like, you know, right. the aesthetics are good. Right. If it costs me $2, mm -hmm. To get this water bottle, mm -hmm. I need to turn around and sell it for six. Six. Because two dollars to get my money back for buying the right. bottle, two dollars to order it again, right. and then the other two dollars is my profit. The same thing with service industry people. They already their prices, they are the ones that set their prices. So nobody else is saying, hey, you need to charge $50 for a haircut. Most service industry people are already charging a price with their tip included. So whether you tip or not, they're still good. Because think about it, if I'm doing nails, right? So mm -hmm. my nails cost $100. Mm -hmm. um, if I was my nail tech, mm -hmm. this set probably would have actually been anywhere from $60 to $75. That means that extra $40 to whatever, whatever, is my tip. And then you're not thinking like that, so mm -hmm. you're tipping on top of that, but it's not it's not your, your place to think like that. Right. You're, tip, you're just tipping from your heart from, you know, somebody yeah. providing you a service. But a lot of these, like, service industry people, and they're, they're just, a lot of them are greedy. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are real greedy. You want me to move it closer? No, you're good. You're okay. good. No, you're perfectly fine. Yeah, so. Okay. Damn, I don't even know the question you asked. Well, it doesn't matter because that was that was a gem uh, right there. Did it make sense? It made okay, plenty of sense because cool, cool. I never knew that, and that made plenty yeah. Of you sense. set your own prices. Okay, that was dope. That yeah. was dope. Um, okay, so to spin back to the bartending aspect. Yes. So last night I was at Monarch in Uptown, mm -hmm. and I was at the bar, and I was speaking with a a, a woman bartender, mm -hmm. and I was just asking her some questions. And one thing that she told me she does, she's in a relationship. She's a female bartender. Mm -hmm. She says that she, her and her boyfriend have have a understanding of a certain rule that they go by. Mm -hmm. When she's at work, she's single. Mm -hmm. Get what I'm going? Yeah. Meaning, complete green light to flirt. Right. To lead people on, sell mm -hmm. people a dream. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask you, what's your take on that? How much of that is actually considered into the job? I think that's perfectly fine because of the fact that her and her man had a conversation about it. So she told you that they had a conversation about it, mm -hmm. right? So mm -hmm. let's assume she's telling the truth mm -hmm. and her and her boyfriend sat down. They're like, all right, look, like whatever you got to do within reason to get this money, I give you my full blessing to do it. That's cool. 
Right. Um, as long as it, to me, as long as it doesn't go any further than right. that, like if I was in a relationship or whatever, I would still have respect for me and my man, mm -hmm. you know? Um, she says she's still, I don't know if it's a Google number, but she takes numbers, but she doesn't really take numbers, she said. Oh, okay. And she said like, oh yeah, I'll take his number, but not really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she said that. Yeah, I, I, I will never not give somebody my number ever again. I had a pretty traumatizing experience at Dave and Buster's one time. By doing that, so I mean, by not giving someone, by not giving them my number. Do you want to? People got assault. Oh, um, I'll get a, the the real yeah. quick version. Um, there was three gentlemen that came into my bar. Mm -hmm. There was a real quiet one. There was a real loud one, and then there was a one that was kind of in the middle, but he was flashy. He was always like showing off his money. Um, he had got there at like like nine, maybe. Mm -hmm. Asked for my number multiple times i kept saying i was good you know was just giving him i get i think i gave them each like maybe two drinks so they weren't like completely turned mm -hmm. um at some point he took out all of his cash and like spread it all over the bar like just flexing or whatever but like little do he know like a bitch like me that literally goes in one ear and out the other mm -hmm. so he uh what did he do he was like if you don't give me your number i'm gonna get it one way or the other so if you don't give it to me i'm gonna follow you out to your car and i'm gonna take it he said this. Yes, he said this verbatim. And so I'm sitting here thinking, like, he's just another bitch-ass nigga, like, just talking shit or whatever. So the night goes on. He's refusing to pay his tab. He's like, I'll pay my tab once you give me your number. And I was like, bro, it's not that serious. Like, mm -hmm. so we shut all the lights off. Not the lights, but the uh, TVs off or whatever. Lights start to dim down. My manager comes out. She's like, all right, guys, it's time to, you know what I'm saying, pack it up and go, pay your tabs. And he's like, I ain't paying shit. So he took all of his money, like, and threw it in her face and was like, pick my money up, bitch. And my manager was from the hood at the time. So Who she went manager? ballistic. Yeah, she went crazy. Um, and the quiet dude, he started like acting like he was clutching. And then um, the other dude or whatever, they just went crazy. They started grabbing glasses off of my bar and started chucking them at all of my uh, coworkers and my managers. Uh, they assaulted my bar back they started flipping chairs over throwing food they destroyed they destroyed our uh if you know what a pos system is mm -hmm. that's what um that little computer that people use to ring mm -hmm. stuff in yeah they destroyed they probably they they caused about a couple thousand dollars um and worth damage. of damage um well, yeah, cops got called or whatever, got them up out of there. But it was real. It was real scary because they were acting like they had a gun. And it's like mm -hmm. the way that could have went, it could have went totally left. So now just to alleviate because men are crazy. Like, I don't think people really realize how dangerous it is to be a woman nowadays. Like just something as simple as saying no, thank you can set a man not in his right frame of mind over the top. And so I just, I'm like, you know, it's not even worth the headache. I have a block button. I can just take your number and block you whenever I get home. Or That's whatever, what you whatever. do now? That's what I do now. Mm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, to each his own though. Some women, they they don't care. Whatever, they'll give their number out or give a fake number. But men men are starting to call that motherfucker right in front of you. <laughs> so it's, Well, first off, let me say, it's wild that, first off, you're not even the first story like mm -hmm. that that i've heard really whether in person or on social media social media there's hundreds there's yeah. thousands of stories similar to that mm -hmm. but even in person you're not the first story i've heard similar to that mm -hmm. uh that, that is wild yeah. you know what i'm saying i'm embarrassed for the men community because mm -hmm. i'm the complete opposite if someone don't want me i'm cool like yeah. i don't i don't want to i will never force someone to try to want me that doesn't want me i think that's insane but for you to be to the point where you get rejected the two most dangerous mammals on this planet is one, a dude that has nothing to lose that gets rejected. Yeah. Like in your scenario mm -hmm. where they get rejected and they just can't handle it. They got nothing to lose. Yeah. They never had anything bad on their arms. So when they get turned down, they just flip out because they think that's the end all be all. Yeah. And two, a dude that a girl doesn't want him anymore, but he still wants her. Yeah. Those are the two most dangerous men on planet. Mammals, fuck men. Those yeah. are the two most gorillas, lions, tigers. Nothing. Way more dangerous yeah. than these type of dudes I'm talking about. Yeah. You know how many dudes are in prison right now over this shit? Mm -hmm. You know how many dudes are six feet under yeah. because of this shit? Because they had no idea what they was getting into. A girl was single, so she thought they're dealing with the girl, but her mm -hmm. ex can't let her go. He pops up. 
and shoot this nigga. Yeah. You know how many situations happened went down like that? A lot. It's insane. And then, like you said, like how many women get assaulted because a dude, because a girl won't give you her fucking number? Yeah. That I'm a, I'm embarrassed for the men community for some shit like that. Yeah. That is insane to me. That is legit insane to me. Y'all niggas need to get yourselves together. Y'all need to raise y'all standards and work on your motherfucking self to the point where you're turning down women. What the fuck are we doing? Yeah. Um, but do you have a Google number? I don't. I always recommend a Google number in a situation like that because they yeah. say the same thing. They're like, oh, they'll call it in front of you. A Google number, You say you had a Google number. If mm-hmm. I called your Google number, it will still ring to your phone and you uh-huh. can show them because their caller ID will pop up. Yeah. You can still show them and be like, is this you? They're yeah. like, yeah, that's me. They will still think they got it, yeah. even though it's a Google number. I use text now from like time to time whenever yeah. I have like clients and stuff, but mm. that's about it. Yeah, that's a damn shame. Some of you dudes need to, a lot of you dudes need to do better, man. That's a damn shame. Do better. All right, to get back on a lighter subject. Um, So we were talking about, you know, pretty much how much of flirting goes into being a bartender. Yeah. Let me ask you this. Have you ever flirted with someone because it's part of the job as a bartender mm-hmm. but actually ended up liking them and it's gone past that yes one time yeah. um so i've never had like a one night stand like a nigga like came up to the bar and mm-hmm. i ended up either in his bed or he ended up in mine mm-hmm. that night so you never like had a one night stand with a customer that like did it right you was flirting with him oh he did it right back and then boom bada bing oh like a one night no i've never had a one night stand in that sense no have you in general I've had one one night stand, yes. Is that it? That is it. I've only had one. Okay. Before you had that one night stand, did you always tell yourself you at least wanted to try one one night stand? Nope. Okay, so it was unexpected. It was never on my bucket list. Yeah, I'm not a it sounds crazy. I'm 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 not a sexual person. Uh-huh. Unless I'm like really dealing with somebody. Okay. I'm more of a like a What's the word? I'm more of a sapiosexual. I was going to say, yeah. say sapio. Okay, so it's sapio. sapio. It might be sapio. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, no, like if you can't here. finger that mine, uh-huh. baby. No. Okay. <laughs> like it don't never it don't never be that. I think one night I was just I was I was I was I was lit and we talked for eight hours straight. That's a whole trip to Got down New Orleans. Or you know Tampa. what I'm saying? We talked for eight <laughs> hours straight and That's then bada boom, bada bing. But in my head, I'm thinking, like, ain't no way no nigga about to sit up here and talk to a bitch at 2 in the morning mm-hmm. for eight hours straight, so all the way to 10 a.m. and not really be... I don't. I was young, though. I was, like, 21 or whatever, so... You're an adult. Yeah. 21. Yeah. But the reason why I ask is because that a lot of women tell me, like, that's on their bucket list to have at least one one-night stand. Mm, I want to fuck on a Ferris wheel, but that's that's on my bucket list. But with somebody that I'm fucking with. Okay. Yeah. So someone that you're locked in with. Why Ferris wheel? I don't know. I like I like thrill. Mm. Like I like thrill stuff. So like movie That's theaters. Thrill, like, yeah. Yeah. Somebody's bar mitzvah. Like <laughs> that shit's cool. I fuck with that. Shalom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> What's the most thrilling place you have had sex up until this point? Oh, I'm, I've been told I'm boring because my friends are some fucking freaks. Um. Put me on. Right, go ahead. Oh, on top of a car. On top of a car, like the roof or the hood? Yeah, the the, the roof. The roof? Mm-hmm. Look at my roof. Look at my roof. It's okay, you smashed on top of the roof. Yeah. How did that go? It was it was hard. The car and him. Yeah. But yeah, that movie theater, I think the movie theater was my, my favorite one. To this day, I cannot tell you what happened in Widows. Smashed in the movie theater? Mm-hmm. It was just us two. In the whole movie theater. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's lit. Yeah. You know well, they, I've only had one boyfriend. It was it was with him. Yeah. You know they got cameras in theaters. I do not care. Okay, I was I was joking, but <laughs> no, they do at the top. Ah. They got to, I think. Just in case there's like a yeah, shootout yeah, or something. In case yeah. something happens. Mm-hmm. All right, you do not care. Do you like being seen or recorded? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that do for you? Mm-hmm. Repeat the question again. What does that do for you, being seen or recorded during... Oh, seeing like somebody else see me? Yeah, what did you thought I said? No, I heard the word. It just it just didn't process. Um, yeah. But recorded, like I, I'm thinking when you said recorded, that's what I have focused in on. Like I'm thinking you mean like somebody recording me while I'm... Like both. him recording me. Yeah, both. Yeah, that should turn me up. Mm. 
what is it about being what is what is it that turns women on about being seen during sex like what does that really well, do you keep saying seen and in my head i'm picturing like some porno shit so like i'm on the bed However you nigga. imagine being seen that turns you up the most. I don't know. I've never I've I've never been I've never had sex with more than one entity in, in the room. So mm. well, I'm, well, okay, recorded. Whether it's seen in person or seen through a camera later on. That's mm-hmm. the scene I'm talking about. Oh, I'd be disgusted with myself when I watch it back. <laughs> wow. I'd be like, I I did what? Okay, so post being post like knowing that you're in that state, you're like, what the hell? But during you're turned up. Right. So what I'm saying is, what is it exactly that gets you turned up during while like it's being recorded or being seen? I don't know what it is about that flash. Like I don't know. It'd be the flash. The flash just be doing something to me. Mm. For sure. Flashes. Flash. Yeah. You say hot flashes? Nah, I said flashes. Oh. You know how long it took me to realize what the hell hot flashes even was? (laughs) Like I, I still. Okay, hot flashes and sex. Do not mix. Yeah, I, I could imagine. Mm-hmm. Um, the craziest thing you've seen as a bartender? There was this one time at Dave & Buster's. There was this guy from up top. He would always come in and drink Hennessy. And for those who don't know, up top is what Carolinians call people from Maryland or above. I'm from Maryland, which is technically a southern state, but they say I'm from up top. Yeah, I've been to your, um, your parts earlier this year what's your take on it where were you at as soon as i got off the um where was i was in oh god don't don't make your chopper go block a block that's cool but like there's some part that don't fuck with another part. i think it's baltimore that doesn't fuck with maryland even though baltimore is literally inside of maryland 100%. we're not gonna get into that because yeah. you guys are not gonna come for me uh. i've already had my fair share of you know what i'm saying pow 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 with whoever i need to have it with that's but cool. i made a video on that did yeah, you that's okay 100 accurate yeah okay bet, bet, bet. Yeah. yeah so um yeah as soon as i got off the plane i seen this rat the motherfucker looked like a puppy Mm. I've never seen a rat that big. Did you pet him? He was too far. Mm. He was too far. Um, and then I seen a dead body. <laughs> he was laying in a pool of blood. And then I went to the harbor to take shots. Mm. And then my friend told me that there was a lot of bodies in the harbor. Yes. And recently there was like a jump in mm. in the fucking Baltimore Harbor. Mm. It was like a group of like 50 to 100 people. Majority, Yes. I saw one black person in there and he looked, he hesitated mm-hmm. so hard before jumping in. And he had a look on his face like, I should not fucking be here. He's probably that friend that white people are like, well, my best friend's black. Yeah, you know you dead wrong for that, brother. But he jumped in. But it's like 5,200 people jumped in the fucking harbor water. Okay, for my Carolinians, imagine Lake Laner, ain't that what it's called in Atlanta? Mm-hmm. Imagine that shit times two. Yeah. That's the Baltimore Harbor. Mm-hmm. And people willingly dove in it for, I guess, I don't even think it was for a cause. I think it was just on... Dumbassness. Yeah, they claimed that they cleaned it the day before. bro. I don't care how many times you cleaned the Baltimore Harbor. <laughs> that is literally the worst possible body of water you could put yourself in. No and they excuse. dove in it. All types of hepatitis, crabs... Uh, uh, COVID probably still in there. Staff, it, it, nut, nut, semen. You know what I mean. Spit, blood, everything in there. Fucking a. Decaying bodies. You know how yeah. many. You know how many decayed bodies are at the bottom of the Baltimore Harbor. What? That's skin and tissue and blood and brain and ass that you're swimming in, and they swam in it. That's what I'm saying. Homo sapiens. They're just... Y'all ought to be a motherfucking shame of that shit. All right, let's do this because we're about halfway through. Okay. This is just a podcast. Yeah. That's the name of your soon-to-be podcast. So Mm -hmm. here's what we're going to do. We're going to spin it. You are not a host. This is now... This is just a podcast. Okay. All right. Destiny, you are the host. I am the guest. What do you got for us? So... First of all, everybody give it up by, for uh, day by day. You know oh, stop, stop. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you like getting your ass ate? No. I've never done it. Okay. So, I can't necessarily say I don't like it, mm. but I like everything else so much that I can't see myself wanting to partake in that. So, are you saying that maybe like you wouldn't be a 
opposed to? Let's say y'all are drunk out of y'all I'm mind. opposed to it is what I'm oh, saying. Oh, you are opposed to it. I'm just oh, saying okay. technically I can't say I don't like it because I've never done it. Yeah. But I'm opposed to it. That's like me asking you, do you like how dog shit tastes? Technically, you don't know because mm-hmm. you've never ate it. Right. But I'm willing to bet that you don't want to eat dog shit. But you know damn well. Okay. okay. That's me with getting my ass ate. Got you. Everything else feels so good. I don't necessarily. Now, the gooch. Listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Burr. I'm Gucci man, little flair when it comes to the gooch. Oh, fucking 1017. Oh, my God. You know God. what I mean? Goo-wopsky. Hmm. But when it comes, top half only. That's a mil- That's like a mil- millimeter away. It's middle grounds. I can deal with middle grounds. I'm not going ground zero. Top half only though. Oh, as well. Top half only. Okay. Top top half of it. The, so there's two parts of the gooch. It's the top half and the bottom half. The bottom half. I mean, you might as well. If you if a girl eats the bottom half of a gooch or licks the bottom half of a gooch, more than likely she's going to credit card swipe. And at that point, you might as well you just let her go. Huh? 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 Or would you do like a little? <laughs> I've done I'm that to somebody before. Pluck. Nah, I, I thumped the fuck out of his yeah, forehead. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a pluck. What do the you say, The nigga was thump? vacuum cleaning my clit. Uh, that shit hurts, mm. nigga. The same thing can happen with the tip. One chick it's, went crazy on my tip, and I'm like, yo, like, it's cool to go to the tip, but that's low-key sensitive, high-key sensitive, yeah, actually. Like, I heard. Back the fuck up. So it's the same with the clit. I heard. I think that communication goes a long way. Like, of course, like, if you... You in the mood or whatever, and the vibes is just right. Ain't nobody about to go down and just, you know. Right. But Have you ever ate ass? No, I have not. I have not. Do you see yourself doing such? I don't. Do you like your ass ate? It's not a necessity. You said it's not a necessity? Mm -mm. Understood. Um... I don't think it ever is. I think no. There are some women. If you don't eat ass, you there's no reason why y'all are talking. Fucking twenty twenty four. Yeah, there's some women out there. Kevin Gates and Fat Trail. And anal. And oh, women that per, like prefer anal. There's women who, if you if you're not into anal, then there's also no reason to talk. To okay. Her. Yeah, I've never experienced either or, so I don't. You never had your ass ate? Oh damn! I just lied. No, I meant I've never. You never done anal? anal. Okay. Yeah, okay. and okay. But I've never eaten ass. I was already say if you're a chick in 2024 that's never had her ass ate, you're kind of skeptical. <laughs> Meaning what? Like it might <laughs> it might be something wrong with you. Oh well, I mean it's something wrong with a. All of us, right? In but I'm saying, shape, like, so. if a dude doesn't want to eat your ass in this age, then, mm-hmm. like, I don't know. Like, maybe you're not that shit for real. No pun no. intended. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Because every woman gets her ass ate today because of uh, Kevin Gates and Fat Trail. And because of social media, like, ass eating is, like, a norm. Is it? Yes. Mm. Like, that's like a chick saying she's never been eight, been eaten out before. Right. That's if okay. You, if you never had your ass ate. So you're putting that on the same level? It's like right underneath it. Yeah. I'm just saying like at least once. Every chick oh, at yeah, least yeah. once has had her ass ate today. If not, then like you... you oh, okay. You're saying if you have never mm-hmm. gotten your ass eaten, then okay. Then gotcha, you gotcha. then you ain't that smoke. Yeah. That's how I see it. Well, then. You heard it here first. That's how I see it. If you don't get your ass eaten, you're not that smoke. You're not that smoke. Um... <laughs> uh, what else do we got for this? It's just a podcast. Great topic, by the way. Oh, well, thanks. Do you have a list? Uh, I have, uh, yeah. Because, yeah. I'm a planner, you know. Yeah. No, I, I do the same thing. I have a list of topics. For day-by-day podcast topics, mm-hmm. I have a list that's like three years old and yeah. like hella long. Yep. Same exact thing. I'm on the right track. Let me just say I'm honored to be here. Oh. Honored to be here in your presence, Destiny. I'm Thank honored to you. be here on This Is Just A Podcast. I've been watching it for years. Mm. I've been on the wait list for months, <laughs> and I've just been anticipating this moment, and to be here is, on, is an honor. Well, I'm glad you can make it. Yes. Yeah. Wouldn't um, miss it. Wouldn't miss it. Would you get your significant other's name tatted? Why or why not? Yeah. You're married. Married? Married with two kids. Yeah, yeah. I would. Oh, I'm okay. tatted first and foremost. I love tattoos. I've been addicted since my first one at 15 years old. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I would. I see a little owl over there. Mm-hmm. The owl. The best part is on this side. Got Aaliyah and Jimi oh. Hendrix and a lion for my cousin. That's my next one. What? I got to get a lion tatted behind here. Mm-hmm. Cause I'm, start, I'm probably just going to start at like a half sleeve, but yeah. I already started. Yeah, I will get my significant other tatted. Shit, I will get my girlfriend tatted, honestly. Really? I will get my, yeah. My problem is I fall in love too, too like quickly. Quick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I'm going to say this as far as that. Yes, I will get my, I will get my girlfriend tatted. Mm-hmm. <gasps> Fellas, mm-hmm. here's a tip. 
Get your girl tatted in red. Why get her name tatted in red, Day? Because red ink is the easiest to cover. Yeah, that is true. It could blend well with. And you can tell her I'm getting it in red to signify love. I hate you niggas. That's all y'all do is lie. Listen. Say no, you stop. If no, I never that's told a good you idea. nothing, I told you something right there and put that's, it to use. That's a great idea. Um, okay, so this brings me to my next topic because you mm -hmm. know how I said I fall in love after like, you know, mm -hmm. 3.5. Um, who, who do you think is a better role model? The City Girls or Disney Princesses? A better role model? Mm -hmm. Just think about the question real quick. Between City Girls and Disney Princesses? Mm -hmm. A better role model uh, would be City Girls. The more Why? toxic role model would be the Disney Princess. 100%. Because the Disney Princess dream is that Prince Charming is just going to come and sweep you off your feet and yeah. find you no matter what. That's it. No. First and foremost, you have to be the right type of woman for that to happen, if it does happen. But not mm -hmm. only that, y'all outnumber us. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, it's... Look how many women out here are saying, I'm waiting on my man. I know God is, I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on my man from yeah, God. Yeah, serious prayer. They're, they're in their 40s still waiting. Yeah. They've been waiting since they were 20, mm -hmm. 21. They're 42, still waiting on that <laughs> man that God is supposed to send to come swoop yeah. them off their feet while they're in the crib, not doing nothing. He's just going to come find them. That for That's sure. That's my fear. Yeah, that for sure is more toxic. Now, City Girls, I mean, neither one is really ideal or good Sex. but if i had to choose one to be better then i'm mm -hmm. gonna say city girls mm -hmm. because i mean at least they're putting themselves out there mm -hmm. get into the bag well women are attracted to toxic shit some women yeah you know. some women are attracted to toxic shit mm -hmm. no a good amount of women are to attracted to toxic shit 60 like percent yeah that's more that's majority mm -hmm. i'll give you 60 percent Especially if the dude is toxic mm -hmm. and has good penis for her. Oh. Oh. Toxicity and good dick. The women good go, dick trumps woman, everything. Women go crazy for that. You could be a walking red flag, but if you have good... Dick and red naive, flags. Women love dick and red flags. Y'all love it. Yeah. That shit is insane to me. Why do y'all love it so much? Hold on. <laughs> y'all. You said what? I don't. I can't speak of my fellow counterparts, but um, I I have not had the type of dick that'll make me do some of the stuff that I have seen other females do. Um, all that putting like Snickers in people's gas tanks, or busting windows out of cars, or pretending to dress up like a coworker and then pulling up to your job and saying that you're a new hire. I've never. I've you have friends that have done that, mm -hmm. dressed up as a employee at the dude's job and pulled up saying I was a new hire. It was my idea, <laughs> but I would never do it myself. She got him back. Jesus. You're welcome. <laughs> so let me ask you, do you think a dude that has never gone through something like that has good dick? No, good dick? not necessarily. I won't, I won't say that. Um, because me, well, I have had good penis or whatever before, but I know how to contain myself. Like, okay. I'll be thinking about you 24-7 and mm -hmm. it'll be driving me nuts, mm -hmm. but you would never know. Okay. Yeah. So I can, I can, but that, I'm not. But that sounds like a, a pot that's boiling with the top over. Yeah, like, it, it is. It builds up to the point where it busts. You're it saying is. it's never bust what you have in that mentality? I don't believe in fucking up people's property. Like, mm -hmm. if it's that bad, I will leave. I was mm -hmm. good before you got here. I will mm -hmm. be good after you leave. Okay. So me, and then you're getting into like legal shit or whatever, and then you busting up people's shit that they probably can't get back or it took them a very long time to get. Mm -hmm. I understand your feelings are hurt, but just leave. Just fucking leave. You're still fucked up by forgiving that idea, the whole just. Oh, I gave her the shit. It was Amazon. You know how easy oh it is to get in that motherfucker? I used yeah. to work there yeah, for like two months easy. until I ran this lady over, and then they fired me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she got a little pimp walk down, but she's fine. You just can't. You just. You just don't know who you fucking with sometimes. Like, we need to hear this. How the fuck did you run somebody over? So I was having a bad day. <laughs> I was having a pretty bad day. 
I had just got a fresh blowout and it rained. So I was walking around looking like a goddamn troll doll. I got humped by three dogs that day on three different occasions. And I was just over it. I couldn't find any apartments to deliver the packages to. So I'm finally driving back to the station or whatever. I had finished my routes. I get to the stoplight. It's green. This lady is trying to cross over or whatever. So I was going to be, you know what I'm saying, a good Samaritan and let the bitch cross. The bitch, you, you ever seen people like walk in front of your car mad slow mm -hmm. and just dare you to hit them? Mm hmm yeah. Are you fucking serious? But I think what would have saved her though, had she not winked. The bitch winked at me. She was moving mad fucking. I was already having a day. Like she was moving like real like molasses slow. And you could like tell. Like it wasn't one of the things where like she had like a a uh am about to say walk impediment. I don't even think that's a real thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean I tapped her. I tapped her a little bit. In my defense, I tried to I tried to scare her. But then once I kept going, something told me not to stop. So I just, I just didn't. Maybe she winked as in thank you. <laughs> no, I'm a bitch. I know what that wink was. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I gave her exactly what she wanted. You're welcome. Like, is she good? Like, does she have to? Was she hospitalized after that? Like, what? Yeah, she went to the she went to the hospital. Um, I forgot how I swung that because the case is closed now. But um, so I can speak on it now. I forgot how I swung. Past it. statue limitations. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I forgot how I swung that shit. But um, the judge was basically like, "Don't do it again." I was like, "Okay." Yo, Destiny, that is absolutely insane. Is it? Yes, I worked Amazon delivery for a whole. Oh, so then you know what the fuck I'm talking about? No, I don't. I mean, I, I, I'm listening to you, but I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm hearing your story, but mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. That's insane. I've had plenty of bad days, mm -hmm. a lot of bad days where I finished my route. It's raining outside and I had to go rescue somebody. Oh, I was always the rescuee. Oh, I fucking hate people like you. Because why? Like, I'm busting my ass to cover <laughs> your ass. It only happened like five times. Five times too many. I've never been rescued. Really? Yes. I, I treated, when I was Amazon delivery, I treated it as a workout. Like, I used to move. Yeah, nah. I used to, yeah, I used to get through my shit, but then I had to slow down because I realized I was getting through it too quick because I always had to rescue somebody. Mm -hmm. So you had to find that middle ground. Yeah. But then it kind of sucks because you can slow down on purpose to not rescue somebody and still rescue somebody. You'd be like, I should have just went crazy and then rescued somebody. Yeah. Those were the days. No, nah, the days was fucking um them twenty routes or sixty was the C. It was sixty. I think that was the lowest. Yeah, it was definitely at least a hundred plus when I did Amazon. Yeah, my last day was the day that that shit said three eighty. Three eighty stops or packages? Three eighty packages. Okay. Yeah. Eh, yeah, that was about ideal. Yeah, but I was so used to the sixty. Right. And they what sixty through. packages? Yeah. That's nothing. it was a it was a what call it route. What. Um, the little trial route that they oh, give you. Oh, yeah, yeah, in the beginning. That, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't last that long. I think it was like three months tops, maybe. And it was near um, prom, prom time. Yeah, so, prom yeah. day. Never again. So, you know what's crazy? On the list that we went over earlier, mm -hmm. Amazon warehouse workers, as mm -hmm. far as red flags. Oh, for sure. Was like number I agree six. With that. Yeah, that yeah I agree six. with that. Especially the warehouse, bro. Them warehouse relationships. I heard about them. Them shits be fun i heard they used to get it in yeah i was driving i was happy because i'm like yo i would i would not be focused if i was in a warehouse mm. like I'd, I'd probably you know what i'm saying be running through shit in there i'd be all distracted yeah. like when you delivering it's just you you're just yeah. doing your thing Listen but them warehouse stories man in the warehouse inside the fucking warehouse yeah <laughs> yeah i ain't mad I... at it must be nice Okay, I have one last question. What do you got? I forgot it. <laughs> uh oh yes. If you had to have any abnormality, which one would it be? Because mine would be Tourette's. Like disorder or something? Mm hmm You can pick anyone in the world, but you have to have one. That's an interesting question. I've never heard this before. Um, if I had to pick any abnormal a T, what would it be? <laughs> Did I say it right? Mm -mm, but abnormality. Yeah. Okay. 
Any abnormality, I would say sleep apnea. No, uh, insomnia. What? <laughs> Neither one of those are. I would say insomnia. Insomnia is where you can't sleep, right? Yeah. I would say insomnia. Sleep apnea, you damn near dying your yeah, sleep every not, night. Not sleep apnea. I would say insomnia, because I could get shit. I could get more shit done because I don't sleep. That shit in the long run, that shit yeah. gonna fuck you up. Well, we're here for a good time, not a long time. You I know. Just love Tourette's. Like, what is it about Tourette's that you love? So you know, I like like dark shit. Mm hmm. And I don't know, like. I'm not laughing at the fact that they have Tourette's. I'm laughing at the shit that they're saying and the fact that it's happening in the first place. Like, mm -hmm. motherfuckers just be out and about, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna redo the shit. Tourette's. Fuck. Uh, yeah. So wait, have you, yeah. You know what's crazy? I've never seen or met someone with Tourette's. Me either. Oh. Do they even exist? Yeah, I think so. I think oh. Tourette's. I know Tourette's is real. I think it's just very uncommon. It's not in Charlotte. Huh. It's not in Charlotte. If you have Tourette's and you're in Charlotte, please do. They might be hidden. They might be in the house all day, so they don't catch like. Oh, you know that girl just be like, wind it up. Nah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she she I, I fuck with her. I fuck with her. This is one girl. She's like, oh, um, she, she got Tourette's. Yeah, hell of a like bad. Yeah. Real bad, and I feel for her sometimes because I be watching her videos and she'll be like breaking down, crying, like telling us about like what happened that day. Like it was this one time she um she went to a, a doctor's appointment. And she was having a really bad episode mm. and people were just like staring at her, looking at her crazy, like as if Tourette's isn't a thing. Like mm. I can't, I can't be in the room when shit like that happens. Like I'm, I'm the one that's going, that's going to speak up and say something. What are you going to say? You're right. I'm probably not going to say It's anything. an uncontrollable condition. No, 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 not to them. I'm talking about the people that's looking at her crazy. Oh, you, oh, well, yeah. good for you. Yeah, you're yeah, like yeah. A, I was, um, I'm probably not going to say something. You're like a vigilante. You headlock. You're yeah. like a vigilante. Yeah. That's good. I'm going to suffocate them with my titties. Because why are you looking at them like that? Well, that that, makes sounds, no that sense. sounds more of a gift rather than a uh, punishment. Yeah, until your death by titties. You said suffocate by titty, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's more of a that's more of a gift than a punishment. Nah. Oh, shit. How did, yeah. how, did, uh, how did Richard die? Oh, he got suffocated by some titties. That, that's a hell of a way to go out. Nah. Shout out to Richard. That's like how Kevin Samuels said Kevin Samuels went out. Didn't he go out while somebody was riding him? He went outside of a young Latina joint. That's how you go the fuck out. You hear me? Is that your type? You like Latinas? I do. I like all types. No, I don't like all types. But I, I do like Latina women. I like Latina women. I like Caribbean women. But my number one preference is brown. Brown women. Brown what? Like as in black women? Yeah. Brown oh, women. like brown skins. I love brown women. Good That's for you. always been like my number one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't really like light skinned women. They're cool. Yeah, they're cool people. Some of them. They're cool people. Yeah. S sneaky as hell. So if you can build your dream woman. Not doing it. We don't have to talk about like. What I'm not call doing it. it. I'm saying, okay, if you could build a bitch. I'm not doing it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, I'm not about to sit there and build a chick. I'm not doing it. Nope. Not ready to catch me in a who's cow. Uh-uh. What? How? I'm not doing it. Just by, I'm just saying like attributes and stuff. You don't have any attributes I don't have a, I don't have a type. She just has to have a good sense of humor. You just did it. Common sense. I prefer brown skin. Mm -hmm. I've dated a few dark skin women in my uh, time. Light skin, I stay away from. But I prefer brown skin. Um, anywhere from hazelnut to dark brown mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it so like you're dark brown yeah, yeah i always about to ask am i dark brown or am i light dark no nah, you're dark brown i think so. um, i don't so, see some dark skinned women so bright yeah so i don't as far as height i don't care tall short dealt with both she has to she doesn't have like i'm a gym freak she doesn't have to be a gym freak but she does have to be some sort of fit mm-hmm um, like I said, common sense because that shit is not so common nowadays. Mm -mm, it's hard to come by. Yeah, sense of humor, uh, and just delicate. I love a delicate ass woman yeah. that you know what I'm saying, like, you know, like after we knock boots, like she makes my bed or she wants to lay up or she uh, wants to cook me something or you know. See, what I mean? thought that shit was weird. Because I've done that before and like nah, men just completely just Nah, it's not it's not weird to me. It means a lot. When a woman makes my bed, like yeah. after we fuck, it means two things. First and foremost, that she is submissive, mm -hmm. and two, that I put it on her. Because if you ain't, if you, you ain't get up and you start making somebody bed, 
It means you put it down. Yeah. Because if you ain't fucking right, she trying to get up out of there immediately. Yeah. You can tell by if you really did it right by three things. One, if she makes her bed. Mm-hmm. Two, if she accidentally leaves something. <laughs> <laughs> and three, <laughs> if she wipes you down afterwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, you get the warm towel. Mm-hmm. It's a necessity. If you don't get the towel or if she collects everything before she leaves or she ain't make your bed, you ain't hit it right. She in a, she in a rush to leave. Yeah. She's like, all right, let me get the fuck out of here and picks up everything from lashes to scarf to, to clothes to bracelet yeah. to fucking socks. Nah. Like, if she leaves, if she leaving a bracelet, like you said, mm-hmm. she leaving a sock behind her drawers maybe whatever if she's leaving shit behind mm-hmm. you put it down i second that yeah. sexual and if, she, and if she wipes you down with that towel mm-hmm. and then afterwards afterwards she makes your bed mm-hmm. and don't let her make you a sandwich or make you some french toast you king tut yeah you did what the fuck you were supposed to do you hit it over the top yeah so if any of you dudes out there that never had none of that shit you got some work to do get mm-hmm. in the lab yeah yeah type shit <laughs> you want to switch it back over to the day by day now yeah we can we can uh revert back to day by day okay yeah I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that well that was good awesome those were great topics very great topics especially mm-hmm. the ab, uh ab, what was it called the abnormality abnormality mm-hmm. i've never heard that before that was very original yeah. no nah, that was good that was good stuff so give me some cons some, some, stuff kind? That, some stuff that I can go back and work on. I would say, let's hear your answer more. You know what I mean? Because I know what I'm doing, so I'm able to ask you to pull it out. Oh, what more. do I think? Yeah, your feedback. What do I think I did? Um, no, I'm saying like your feedback during. Oh, Get okay. more of your feedback during. Okay. But you did good by letting me talk because a lot of podcasters don't let the guests talk and they forget to realize it's all about the guests. Mm. Like when you were telling your stories mm-hmm. or whatever, I'm letting you talk. I'm letting you get because it was good stuff. Mm-hmm. They know me. They don't see me for 50, 60 episodes. Yeah. They don't give a fuck about me no more. They want to know about the guest. Yeah. So that's that was a good thing that you did. Okay. Yeah. Maybe when I go back and edit, I'll be able to really evaluate yeah, yeah. it more and I'll let you know. But from what yeah. I seen, you did good. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, we we switched it back to uh day by day. Mm-hmm. Before we get out of here, before we started shooting. Uh, you said something similar to like life has been crazy lately to the point where you couldn't even remember your own age. Oh yeah. Life has been life huh? Life has been, life has definitely been lifing. I think I'm in that weird gray area period where I'm figuring myself out. I'm transitioning from a young adult into an adult adult, I guess I would say. Um, it's weird, man. Like, mm-hmm. I'm at that age now where I could date the son or the, the father. That mm-hmm. shit's scary. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know what I want to do career-wise. Like, I have I have no idea. Um, my parents, family, or whatever, they, they, they just want to see me in a career. But I don't see myself in a career. Like, I don't see myself working for somebody. What do you see yourself? That's the problem. That's the only, that's the, that's as far as I've gotten. I know I don't see myself working for somebody, but I don't see what it is exactly that I'm doing. I know it's something in the business world. Um, so are you I've saying had, you see yourself as an entrepreneur? Oh yeah, for sure. I've, okay. um, I've been a quote unquote entrepreneur or whatever since 2020, since like COVID. Okay. Um, when I was sitting back, compl- uh, what the fuck is that word? Complacive? No. Complaining? No. Collecting. Collecting. I was <laughs> All right. I was sitting back blame collecting. Blame the sweet red. <laughs> no, we can't. We, we got to blame that on Destiny. I'm, uh-huh. yeah. Um, I was collecting unemployment checks. I was getting about $800 every Monday. And I took that money and created a business. I created Destiny's Playhouse. No, it is not a sex store. No, it is not toys. It is a hair company. Um that kind of snowballed into me getting certified and doing lashes. Then I, I just, I've, I've jumped from business to business so much. Um, I know that that's what I want to do. Um, I've been doing the teeth thing for a while, um, like tooth gems, teeth whitening. And that's mm-hmm. something that kind of stuck. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I enjoy doing it. Do you have certification for that? I did get certified, yes, okay. for teeth whitening and tooth gems. Okay. Mm-hmm. What were the prere- what were the prerequisites to get certified for that? Um, so in the state of North Carolina, as long as you take a 
you take a course from somebody who is registered, um, like in the, the dentist world or whatever, like dentist. Um, I do still want to get my DA's license. Um, What's that stand for? Den- dental assistant. Okay. Um, just so I can be like legit, legit. Because mm-hmm. um, right now I'm just kind of like the hood teeth guru right now. But um, a lot of people are. Mm-hmm. But it's going okay though. What comes with the DA certification? Um, access. A lot of access to like I have access now. Um, but to like dental grade. Okay. Stuff. Um, just so I can, because I like getting giving my clients whatever the best that I could possibly mm-hmm. give them. Yeah. Um, so I could easily go on Amazon or go on you know eBay or do this and a third. But I don't play when it comes to people's like health. Um, that's why everything that I use is top notch. So what's your take on the hood veneer service? Like really being at an all time high? No, stop doing that shit. You're shaving people's teeth down. These teeth that you cannot get back. It's not, it's not like skin. It's not going to grow back. Mm -hmm. You get one set of teeth Mm -hmm. per life. Um, if you have to get veneers, like absolutely have to, like there's some people whose teeth are perfectly fine and they go and get a veneer. I mean, do what makes you happy. Who am I to say, you know what I'm saying? Don't do this. Don't do that. Do I'll say you're a you fucking happy. clown. You ain't got to say it. I'll say you're a clown. <laughs> if, your teeth are, if your teeth are good and yeah. you're still going to get veneers, you're a fucking clown. But we're yeah. our own worst, like we, we always criticize our own selves. We're mm. our own worst critic, you know? Mm-hmm. So- I could look at you and you could see a flaw in yourself, but I think it might be the perfect, the most perfect thing that mm-hmm. I've ever seen, right? So that's why I be trying to give people leeway because me, I there's a lot of stuff that I want to change about myself, mm-hmm. but other people have told me that they wouldn't change it for the world. Right. So, but just, I mean, shit, if they got the certifications or whatever and they should look good, I, if you like it, I love it. But, um, yeah, no. Teeth are expensive. I've, I've spent... Two thousand dollars on one tooth for it, for root crown? canal. Oh, root canal! I spent a thousand dollars on another tooth for just a crown. Mm. Three thousand dollars on yeah. two teeth. But you only get one set per. What life. the fuck? And that's why I'm like, I'll spend the money. Yeah. Because like I was gonna just get it pulled, but when you get it pulled, the mm-hmm. the like the two teeth outside of the gap compensate, so they tend to grow towards one yeah. another. I was like, nah, we we gonna keep it as 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 clean cut good quality as possible. Yeah. I'm going to drop that bag on my teeth mm-hmm. every time. Good. That's real good. You mentioned a hot tour. I did. What's your take on that? Like, she blew up off of... Oh, yeah. She, baby girl, is... It's amazing. I think social media is amazing. Changed that girl's life Literally. in one night. Saying hot tour yeah. on that thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're not going to, you know, beat around the bush or anything and act like if somebody else has said it, do you think it really would have blown up as big as it did? Of course not. All right. It's so, always a difference. Yeah. I hate when people try to act like it ain't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it clearly is. It's always yeah. a difference. Because had somebody else said it, they probably would have got called every name of the book. But let her do it. And, but you know what? I ain't knocking her game or whatever. You come up how you come up. Yeah. Do you hawk to it? Are you a spitter? Like, whenever, nasty with it? whenever I am doing those types of things, yes. So it's, a, it's a necessity. Nasty or neat? Typically, I don't know. I don't know. The spit be rolling down, so I, I feel like that's that's good. But a lot of some men don't like that. Like my ex, mm-hmm. he doesn't. Well, I don't know what he likes now, but um, he wasn't a big like messy. He didn't like it messy. If it's O D O D O D messy, yeah. I get it. I've only had one time where it was like. Mm. out of hand messy like yeah. okay like okay you, you proved yourself yeah. what are we doing i'd say it's like it's like in between okay it gets the job done yeah that's a good balance mm-hmm. that's a good balance well bless you for that thanks bless all <laughs> yeah i've been called demonic i've been called um somebody said i suck dick like i'm like i'm ugly yeah i've heard that before you're the second person on the show that's said that actually so maybe you have to give that Somebody someone. else said that too? Yeah. What the fuck is wrong with you niggas? Y'all just out here nah, calling bitches. Nah, that's a compliment. What do you mean? That's a hell of a compliment. Oh, is it? Yes. Oh. That's what I'm saying. Like, I have to give that to someone that's worthy of it. Mm. Have Since I've heard it from Anise, shout out to Anise. Mm-hmm. Since she's told me it a couple weeks ago, I haven't come across it. Somebody anyone. said that to you for real? 
She told me that someone told her that. Wow. Because I've never heard that before. Yeah. Since she told me that, this was probably like a month and a half ago, uh-huh. I haven't come across someone that's deserving of that title. Huh. But when I do, I'm going to give it to her. Good. Please do. Yeah. Just maybe maybe do it after she gets done. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. I, I know how it goes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, nah, that's, that's a hell of a compliment. You said demonic. Mm. What do you, why do you think he called you demonic? So like that. head, like when you're sober and head, when you like off the drink is two totally different heads. Sometimes. Break down Most the difference. The um, Cause like when you, when you're sober or whatever, you're like mindful, you thinking about how this look, that look, that look. Some females don't give, don't give a damn. Yeah. But um, I know me, I, I be in my head about a lot of shit sometimes, but whenever I'm like drunk to the point where I'm focusing on the dick and the dick only, like nothing mm-hmm. else matters. Right. Then yeah, it's it's yeah, that's it's no, probably why. It's nothing better than a woman that's worshiping the dick mm-hmm. when giving head. Yeah, because you can we can feel that. Yeah, yeah. When when she's just treating it like it's the best thing mm-hmm. on this planet. Yeah, we feel that, and that's it's unmatchable. Yeah, one thing I don't like though, I would rather be called a bitch than an eater. During or after. Just, just period. Like if you you arguing with a with with a with a shorty or whatever, please call me a bitch, because like a eater to me, a eater. Your sole purpose on this earth is to eat dick and eat dick only. I know some mean eaters. But I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't so you don't. You wouldn't like, like being like called it. that. You wouldn't like like me saying, "Oh yeah, Destiny's a mean eater." Yeah, to me, that's like Destiny's put on this earth to suck my dick, and that's it. That's interesting. That's an interesting take. Well, yeah. shout out to you. Shout out to all the eaters out there. <laughs> shout out to big shout out to all the real eaters. <laughs> um, but now on the real, you know what I'm saying? Thank you for pulling up, making this episode happen. Yeah. Uh first and foremost, this episode was very, very, very last second, but nonetheless mm-hmm. we made it happen. And it was a great episode, great convo, uh, great, you know, warm up for you and mm-hmm. your This Is Just a Podcast yeah, premiere, which helped. I'm looking forward to. And I just asked that I'd be a, a guest on Man, it one day. what? Yes, of course, without a doubt. Yeah, we'll have it up. Um, and then, of course, I got to thank everyone for tuning in, yeah. whether you're watching, whether you're listening, uh, listening on your respective podcast platform, Apple, Spotify, Google, shut down, no more Google Podcasts, but everywhere else. If you're watching, if you're listening, I truly thank y'all. This will be nothing without y'all. Just ask that you go ahead and fill out the questionnaire in the description to give me more feedback on what you like and don't like on this podcast so I can go ahead and move it forward, make it better for you and the experience overall. Again, Destiny, shout out to you for uh, popping up here. Thank and, you for having me. You know me. what I'm saying? Getting your feet wet in the podcast yeah. game. How's it feel? I feel wet. Yeah. I feel wet. I feel great. I feel great. Pun intended? No pun intended? I don't know it right now. All right, cool. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll leave it at that. We'll get up out of here. Um, until <laughs> next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. We out this bitch. Peace.